Yo, I can't imagine growing up with Facebook. Like, if I had grown up in high school with Facebook or Instagram, I would have, I would have done been in jail like three times over. You know, like things that you do as a human being are frozen in time now. You know, I'm sure I, I read my old articles all the time. Like, damn, man. Like, I still a lot of times I read them. Like, damn, you were still nice as a writer back then, but my opinion has changed. Do you know what I mean? And then, and then I think that's also an interesting reason why people are like, you're only 30. Why did you write a memoir? But I was like, you know what? I want to capture this moment. I want to capture how I feel about that period of my life because I'm just coming out of it. And with that energy, I want to capture that. And you know, if I had wrote, written the memoir in 15 years or 20 years, it's an entirely different book. It's not the same book. So I think the fun part about the digital age and is how we can freeze things in time and remember it and it's there. I think the, the sad thing is, is that people will hold you to that image of who you are. But I think people need to remember, especially in this day and time, that things evolve, people evolve, people change. You know, I wanted to go to Taiwan in the premiere season because, you know, that that's what my food is. That's where my family is from. And I wanted to represent, you know, I was like, who knows if you get season two. But if I'm going to do this show, I'm going to take it to the motherland for like season one. I was going to make sure I got that in. And, you know, season one, your budgets aren't that big. So Vice was like, yo, if you're going to go there, you're going to have to do six parts. And I was like, no doubt. I'll get you six parts. We got six. We did six stories in five days, you know. And those those shoots are tough. Fresh off the boat, I don't think people realize we do four stories in three days everywhere we go. And if we get five days, we do six. So, yeah, Vice expects a lot out of us, and we expect a lot about out of ourselves. And it's it's a lot of fun, you know. Like Vice gives me a lot of freedom and a lot of responsibility, and then, you know, I work harder. I think it's funny, music festivals when they go gourmet is a lot of times like when chefs try to go fashionable, do you know what I mean? And it, you're just like, you really wearing like lace up Prada sneakers, you fucking idiot. So I think a lot of times they'll do like gourmet food trucks at events, I'm like, you got that dude? Like, that's just kind of fugazi. So I don't know, I think, I think that, you know, Guga Muga did a very good job. And not just because I was a part of it. I really thought they did a good job. Those Superfly people, they're like, they're very into the culture of it and they get it and they, they, they understand it. They're, they're kind of part of it. Um, there's the other type where it's just like, yo, let's just get like a buzzy food truck or something that like people know and like we'll throw them in there. And it's like, you know, people that follow it or really know what's popping. Not follow it, but people that eat those genres of food will know like, yo, you kind of got like the, the minor league one, you know? It kind of disrespects everybody involved. Now the corn dog dude feels like shit because he's next to like, you know, whatever the the like New York strip steak sandwich, you know. And the New York strip steak sandwich is like, why am I next to this dude with the fucking corn dog? So I feel like either go all out or don't go all out at all and sell the Jamaican beef patties and pizza and whatever because that's great too, you know. But I don't like it when it's like half-assed and confused and, and all that. Um, I do a lot of events where people are like, we want, we want your flavors, we want this and that, but like, you know, this is a fashion event and most people are vegetarian or they don't eat pork or they don't do whatever. I'm like, look, if you want me to do an event and you don't want me to use pork, that's kind of like, yo, Bruce Lee, we want you to fight this dude, but you can't kick him. You know, like, that's my shit. So it's kind of like, yeah. If you're gonna hire a chef, let him do what he does. You know what I mean? You're gonna hire a cook, let him do what he does. That's, that's my thing, you know? Same thing with music, too. Yeah, DJ, too, like, no requests, B. No requests, it's, it's, like, it's like an art form, so respect it. Like, if you want it, take it as is. I'm making weed recipes tonight for Playboy, so I'm making, like, weed tea salmon, and I'm making, like, you know, when you eat lamb, you usually have, like, mint jelly or whatever. Instead of that, I'm doing, like, weed butter with like kofta kebabs on top of like cashew fried rice so you know I cook with weed but I'm not an edibles dude I'm not really like into edibles I think it's kind of uh, you know I'd rather smoke it the best utilization of weed and food or drink I've ever seen is like weed wine like where people will put the weed in the wine in the fermentation process and draw the THC out that way that shit will bust you over the head that shit was the best
Yeah, that cannabis wine. No, I'm heavy into the wire. Fuck with girls. I like girls. I like uh, Game of Thrones. You know, I even like the newsroom. Like, the newsroom proselytizes, but I love it. You know, old people are always like, oh, it's proselytizing and it's like too much. But I'm like, you know what, man? I kind of like it. Like, the, the dialogue is horrible. The love stories are horrible. But, like, I like the politics. You, it's different. If I'm cooking for Hannah or I'm cooking for Lena Dunham, right? But Lena Dunham seemed like a classy chick. You know, I, I would just cook her what we got at Bauhaus. I think she'd fuck with it, you know? Hannah on the show, yo, I think she need like a juice cleanse. <laughs> it's kind of a hot mess. But Lena Dunham, you see her like not looking like Hannah on the show. She's a cute girl, do you know what I mean? And she's sharp, she's funny, and she's pretty down. So I, I'd just take her to Bauhaus, you know? What up, it's your boy Eddie Wong, and we on What's Really Good Magazine.